Hi, I am Dr. Ayda Başkın Martin. In this video, I will talk about the muscles that form the rotator cuff. I would like to hear your feedback. You may either click the like button or leave a comment below. The muscles that allow our arms to rotate attach to the scapula. To able to understand and retain the information about the rotator cuff muscles, I recommend watching my YouTube video about scapula. I edit the link below for your convenience. Rotator muscles originate from three fossae of the scapula. Subscapular fossae, supraspinous fossae, and infraspinous fossae. Rotator cuff is a common name for the group of four distinct muscles and their tendons. Tendons of these muscles come together to form a covering around the head of the humerus and top of the shoulder. The rotator cuff provides strength and stability during motion to the shoulder complex. The name of these muscles are supraspinatus, infraspinatus, teres minor and subscapularis. They are also referred to as the seats muscle as, as reference to the first letter of their names. I hope this mnemonic sits will help you to remember their names easily. Supraspinatus muscle origin in the supraspinous fossa as shown here and inserts onto greater tubercle of the humerus. It initiates and assists the abduction of the arm. In other words, takes the arm away from the body. But it does only the first 20 degree, 15 to 20 degree of abduction. It's like a starter because the primary muscle for abduction of arm, we know that it's a deltoid muscle and it's not belong to rotator cuff muscles. And again, supraspinatus initiate and assist the deltoid in abduction of the arm and acts with other rotator cuff muscles to increase the strength and stability of the uh, shoulder joint. Supraspinatus muscle tendon is the most commonly injured rotator cuff muscle tendon. And if you injured, you may have uh, pain and or limitation of lifting your arm uh, at or above the shoulder level. Infraspinatus originates in the infraspinous fossa of the scapula and insert onto greater tubercle of the humerus. It is the primary muscle for external or in other words lateral rotation of the arm. That means the shoulder rotates away from the body and also as all rotator cuff muscle helps to hold humeral head in glenoid cavity of scapula. It is known as hitchhiking muscle because it allows the arm rotated externally out to side and the thumb sticking straight up as shown on the photo. Teres minor originates from the lateral uh, border of the scapula and inserts on the greater tubercle of the humerus. Laterally rotate the arm and aids to adduction of the arm. That means bring the arm closer to the body and helps to hold humeral head in glenoid cavity of scapula. If you injure teres minor, you may have difficulty putting on your jacket. Subscapularis. It arises from the subscapular fossa and inserts on the lesser tubercle of the humerus. Medially rotates the arm and adducts it, helps to hold the humeral head in glenoid cavity of scapula. Uh, if you injure the subscapularis muscle, you may have difficulty putting your hand behind your back. And those people may, if there's, they are female, they may have difficulty for dressing their bras. Shoulder joint is the most mobile joint and have the widest range of motion in the body. The injury of rotator cuff can lead to shoulder pain, impaired functional capacities, and reduce quality of life. Rotator cuff injuries are very common, affects 3 million people in US every year. 
I wanted to mention here not only the uh, uh, common rotator cuff injuries include rotator cuff tendonitis, inflammation of tendons, and rotator cuff strain, which is a partial or complete tear of these tendons. It may occur over time from continuing wear and tear. However, rotator cuff may also be acutely injured by trauma in falling on your arm and shoulder or from the heavy lifting. And cranial uh, to the rotator cuff, there is a bursae. It shows with the bluish uh, circle, as you see here, bluish. Uh, this this bursae is a um, synovial uh, membrane uh, that uh, inside there is a synovial fluid. And uh, we know the bursae is a sac of the synovial membrane with the synovial fluid. It it covers and protects the muscle and tendons as they are in close contact to the surrounding bones. Overuse of rotator cuff muscles may cause the inflammation of this bursa and ends up with shoulder pain. Can you able to recognize these muscles? Number one, supraspinatus. Number two, infraspinatus. And number three, teres minor. I label with blue the, all three of the the rotator cuff muscle we have this is the posterior surface that's why we can see only three in anterior surface we will have subscapular muscle as well in the part of the rotator cuff muscle but i wanted to label and show you on model other muscles that they are not belong to rotator cuff muscle but easily you may confuse during exam that's why i wanted to clarify you see number six here this is teres major Teres major is not part of the rotator cuff muscle. However, number three shows the teres minor that is part of the rotator cuff muscle. Number four shows the deltoid muscle and number five triceps brachii. Now, let's talk about the, or remi remember the function supraspinatus initiates and assists the deltoid in abduction of the arm. Infraspinatus primary muscle for external rotation of the arm, teres minor laterally or externally rotate the arm, aids to adduction of the arm, and subscapularis is on the anterior surface, we can see here, medially rotates and adducts the arm. I hope you enjoyed and learned the subject we discussed. Feel free to click the subscribe button to be aware of the newest videos or watch as much as you want. Have a good day.